All right, everyone, welcome back into another preseason props video. Give me touching on the top prop bets that we have tonight on the Thursday night football slate, as well as giving you guys some MLB, WNBA prop bets, and one college football prop bet as well. Let's go in and get into it. And so just starting out with the nine to five cheat sheet, we are going to see that we are getting three really good prop bets to use today right away for prize picks, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so we got Garrett Cole for under his pitching fantasy score. We are going to see that's a pretty solid outlier that we have there when we look at his line on prize picks compared to all the other lines that we're pulling in. Okay, based off the average sportsbook line, based off of the projection, based off of the underdog line, it should be at like 34.5 or so. So at 36.5, we can see that's a clear edge. That one has a 56.5% chance that feel pretty good about that. Uh, same thing with Nick here as well, where it's basically the exact opposite. His line should probably be closer to 32.5. Okay. Underdog's probably slightly too high. Prize picks is probably slightly too low. That is a good spot for us as well. And then we do have a college football prop bet that is popping up in there as a good EV bet for us. Okay. So the line is set at 43.5 on prize picks. That's about a 50, uh, 50 there. Um, sorry, at 39.5, it would be about a 50 50 there. And so at 43.5, we are getting a decent edge there as well. We can see underdog has it set at 42 and a half. So we have three really good prop bets to start the day off with there. If we want to go a little bit lower, this is another prop bet where I don't mind it. Uh, and this is going to be the WNBA one. Okay. Only a 53.5% chance to hit. So we don't exactly love that aspect of it, but at the same time, this is a prop bet that we are getting kind of a good edge on. Okay. So at 18.5, we can see that it has about a 53.5% chance to hit. pretty direct correlation there. Okay. But underdog would have it set at 19 and the projection date would have it closer to 20. So those are two spots where I don't mind it. And then I do want to point out this one as well for MLB here is that we can see that this is a clear outlier as well. So we have a decent amount of good prop bets to go in on today for the NFL slate. And so now we go ahead and jump into those NFL prop bets that we are currently getting. And let's just start with the quarterbacks here. So quarterback wise, uh, we don't exactly have a good idea of what the Chicago Bears are going to do as of right now. Um, and then for the Colts, we do know that they plan on giving their starters a quarter and a half. The way I always look at playing time for the preseason when it says a quarter and a half for the starters is typically speaking, it's going to be up to a quarter and a half. Most of the time, coaches are just trying to get a look. Um, I think last week with the Kansas City Chiefs is a good example of that. Uh, it was reported that the Chiefs stars would be playing a half of football and that's not what happened. They had two scoring drives, and then that's all they played. And so that could easily happen with someone like Anthony Richardson tonight as well. And then Logan Woodside. Logan Woodside is expected to get at least a half of football tonight, maybe max of a half of football, because I do think that we are going to see the benches get extended a little bit more. But we look at the Bengals. They have four active quarterbacks on the roster. Only two of them are going to play. So Jake Browning, is going to sit tonight as well as Joe Burrow. And so that leaves them with Rocky Lombardi and Logan Woodside to play quarterback for them tonight. Now, guys, the one thing I want to point out is that the Bengals have been kind of rough this preseason. They're going to want to end on a good note, I would say. Um, let's look at kind of the passing yards. Logan Woodside in the first game, only 12 passing attempts. Didn't exactly love that, but didn't play as much. Still had 149 passing yards in that game. And then in the game against the Bears, he played a majority of the game and passed for 132 passing yards now in that game they only scored three points they could not get anything going in that game and so if they have some more longer sustained drives i do expect him to be a little bit more involved uh while we're there let's let's just talk about the Bengals as a whole we did see lassiter play like 78 percent of the snaps we saw burgess play about like I, over 60 percent of the snaps i forget the exact number and jackson as well they all played a heavy amount of snaps and that was due to two things one of those being the fact that they were a little bit thin at receiver. Charlie Jones was someone that was expected to be active in that game, but he did not play. Charlie Jones is someone that could certainly play tonight, but we look at kind of their team here. Burton did not play that much. We're not expecting uh, Yoshi Voss to play that much. T Higgins is going to be out. Jamar Chase is going to be out. We already know that. Uh, Kendrick Pryor was someone that was a, a DNP in that game. I don't know if he got injured during uh, warmups or something because he was someone that was seemingly going to play a lot of stuff. Snaps. There wasn't that many reports on him sitting or not. So definitely an interesting one there, but he's going to be out. Hakeem Butler, we wonder about how many snaps he's going to get. So I do think we can kind of expect that same ample playing time for Jackson, Lassiter, and Burgess. And so we look at the prop bets that we're getting there. Lassiter is at 36.5. I would argue that's correct. Um, even if he does play that same amount of snaps, we can't exactly predict the 
quality of targets and all that stuff. I would say that's a good line there. The one I'm kind of interested about is going to be Jackson at 26.5. Now, I kind of mentioned this with the Packers um, in the last video, which was a tilting slate, guys. It, it really was. Started out three for three in the non-NFL prop bets, and then three of the Saints receivers that were expected to sit all played, which meant the, the Saints receiver that we were on was no longer a good bet because he didn't play that much. And then the Packers only scored two points. They could not get a long sustained drive. He needed one more yard, which watching it back, guys, there was, there was a catch that was a bad spot that probably gives him the over there. A little bit tilting when you see it, but regardless, um, the passing game could not get going in that. <laughs> but the point I'm making here is that last week, I kind of mentioned everyone was going to be on Grant DeBose. It made sense for Grant DeBose to have the higher line, but I think Malik Keith is the one we want to go with. I kind of had that same thought here with Lassiter and Jackson, where Jackson should play a decent amount of snaps. I would rather bet his over than in that regard. Also, want to call out Eric All, guys. Eric All played over 50% of the snaps. Preseason GOAT at the tight end position, Tanner Hudson, only played like 16% of the snaps. I think that is something that we can expect to continue. They want to get Eric All some reps. It makes sense to give a rookie tight end reps. This is probably my favorite bet on the day is to bet his over. At the same time, I don't mind the idea of doing a stack. We could do All, Jackson, and then also Logan Woodside for his overs. I would say those are good stacks to be doing. Let's go ahead and, and talk about some of the other spots that we have. So we are going to see that the Colts are going to be pretty thin at the running back position, okay? And so my, my issue here is that Sermon is going to be out. Jonathan Taylor is going to be out. We kind of know that, I, I would think. I, I guess I don't know if Taylor's going to play or not. I would assume he's not, but maybe. It would be a quarter and a half. Tyler Goodson has clearly stood out as the next best running back. And to me, Scott has actually been the fourth best running back. Scott looked super impressive last week on film, guys. He really did. And Evan Hall just looked like someone that, I don't want to say he's not an NFL running back, but he didn't look good. He's probably a practice squad player. He's just another guy is kind of the, the common saying there. And so if look at the prop bets that we're getting for Evan Hall. The reason his line is so low is because he sucks. <laughs> it's pretty simple as that. If this was Scott at 16.5, I would love to do that, but it's not. And I do want to call out guys real quickly. I am doing prize picks right now. I will jump into pick six in a second. And then hopefully at the end of this video, we'll have some underdog coverage as well. If you guys are enjoying this coverage as well, make sure to give a like and subscribe. That really does help out the channel. The more support you guys show, the more content and videos I can produce on this channel. And I love covering it. So it's a win-win for all of us. All right, let's go ahead and jump back into it. And so let's talk about some other prop bets that we currently have on the site that we could potentially attack. Lacan Treadwell ended up with seven receptions last week. He looked good. Don't get me wrong. Um, if we knew his playing time was going to be over 50% of the snap, I would hammer that, but we don't. We have no idea of the snaps for the Colts. We, we really don't. And so for me, I'm kind of just naturally staying away from the Colts then because it's, it's the unknown, right? What I don't mind is kind of looking at the Chicago Bears, okay? It does make sense for Tyler Scott to get a bunch of snaps. Webster, I think, will be the leading snap getter for him, for them, and that's why his line's the highest. The one I'm interested in the most is Dante Pettis. He is kind of a proven veteran at this point. Um, I don't know how many snaps he's, he's going to play. It, it could be one of those situations where he's a veteran. It doesn't really matter if he gets injured. You want him to get his reps, game reps in right now. At the same time, they know what they have in him. They don't really need him to give him a look. It would make more sense to give Tyler Scott and Webster more playing time. I, I don't know if we should be targeting those. I think naturally the thought process would be bet all their unders because they. I get why they're all that high because, yeah, one of them probably will have a really good game. And again, we kind of look at the Bears uh, receiving depth chart. They're they're kind of thin in terms of who's going to play. DJ Moore not going to play. Keenan Allen not going to play. I would I would imagine Adunze is not going to play. You got v Bayless Jones Jr. playing running back a decent amount, and so that does leave them very thin. You got Swain. I don't believe Colin Johnson played that much last game, and so again, that does leave them very very thin. And that's that's why I do like Webster, and that's why their lines are so high because you can't expect them to not get that many targets when they're going to be playing a lot. At the same time, oh, having three Bears receivers at 30 plus yards, I mean, that's a lot for the preseason. So even if they play like 65% of the snaps, it's still is tough to imagine all of them getting the over. 
the same time, we're probably just ignoring it. Another one that I did kind of like as well would be Ian Wheeler for over his rush yards. I would have rather this had been Travis Homer. Just looking at the preseason trends of the Chicago Bears, Travis Homer would be the running back that would get the most amount of work. At the same time, I do think that we're going to see Ian Wheeler get a decent amount of work in this game. The question that I have is, what will the game outcome be when Ian Wheeler gets into the game? We might see a little bit of Roshan Johnson in this game, and then we're going to see a decent, a healthy amount of Travis Homer. That's at least my expectation. Then we're going to see Ian Wheeler cleaning it up. And so I do want to take a quick peek at the Chicago Bears game, just seeing where they're at uh game wise here so very low game total here it's a close game as well so that's a little bit unfortunate there but at the same time if it is a close game that's not going to change the process of the game it's not like they're going to be playing from behind and abandon the run which is going to be good and then i will say the chiefs running back situation I, I will say chances are these two lines for steel and prince are too low because we have seen the chiefs in the past kind of put an emphasis on their backup running backs, getting a bunch of reps. But as it sits right now, with CH being injured and Pacheco not playing, the, the Chiefs stars are not going to be playing in this game. That leaves them pretty thin, but at the same time, with CH injured, Carson Steele's kind of been getting RB2 reps, so has Prince. And so I could just see these three running backs getting a decent amount of work. Although the rugby player, I think the, the dream is over for him. He probably won't play that much in this game. And for what it's worth, guys, I, I don't mind... Williams for his over rush yards. I'm a little bit surprised that they're giving us this low of a line for him. We know it's going to be a three headed monster in this game, which is a good thing for preseason purposes. They're all going to play about 33% of the snaps most likely. So it is weird that he has the lowest line, but at the same time, the reason why he probably has the lowest line is because the cold starters are starting. And so think about it. You got a backup line going against a starting line. Uh, I would say a decent amount of, the Bengals struggles last week, only scoring three points. And, and more, more so the Packers struggles last week was because you had backups going against starters. Even though we nailed the playing time, that's always a concern. And so that that's why I think his is probably the lowest. And then you have Kane and Collins going against more backup players. I do want to call it these lines, though, because if we get Elijah Collins at this exact same line, an underdog, but it's rush receive yards, I want to bet that over because he will be involved in the passing game. Noah Kane will probably be involved a little bit in the passing game as well. Let's go ahead and jump on into pick six here, and then hopefully Underdog will have some bets for us as well. All right, so just looking at pick six as it sits right now, I wouldn't say that we're getting a massive edge on any of these prop bets. Sure, we have a little bit of a stacking opportunity here with Chris Adolakum and then Ross as well, where I guess we don't. I guess it's the exact opposite. Huh, that's weird. That, that's a weird line. Um, hmm. Ross makes sense to get the over just playing time wise. He should see about 50% of the snaps. This Williams one does point to the prize picks line, maybe being a little bit too low. Um, be on the lookout for the Woodside prop, just updating a lot throughout the day. Um, it's one that I could see a lot of line movement and, and even like Laquan Treadwell as well. I think we have a good chance to get some decent edges on some prop bets uh, to today. Jackson, for what's worth on pick six. This is the tough part about uh, pick six and underdog prize picks. They all have different names. So said shed Jackson here, and then we go to him on prize picks, you know, slightly different spelling, but this would tell us that on pick six, we would want to bet is over because it's off by three. And again, he's going to play a lot of snaps. I feel pretty comfortable about that one. So I probably will just be doing a placement bet for tonight's slate right now. And then once the lines kind of update throughout the day, we can you know, find where we're getting the edge. That That's kind of the nice part about pick six. You can go through and adjust your bet. But right now, this is going to be the top bet. And then we'll figure it out throughout the day uh, via the nine to five prize picks cheat sheet. Again, that cheat sheet is going to be available or pick six cheat sheet. That cheat sheet is available with all the other tools for just $10 a month. Head on over to nine to five sports.com to get access to that. And see, guys, th this is what happens when you do so much content for both sites we are getting some underdog prop bets so let's go through it and so looking at Woodside's line is the same so i did mention i would like elijah collins if his rush receiving yards one was exactly the same which it is so let's go ahead and bet that over i feel pretty good about that one there uh evan hall he probably will catch a a pass out of the backfield how much is he going to play tough to say for sure i, I don't exactly love the fact that we're using him after him not looking very good but I would say that's too low. Now, the reason why I say he doesn't look that good is because most of his production last week came on a a run at the end of the half. That was a 10-yard run that probably should have been more than that. But it was kind of one of those uh, pat the stats type runs. Not, nothing too crazy there. Uh, let's see here. 
I, I don't mind the idea of doing Noah Kane for over his over as well. Like I think that that could be one that works out for us. Uh, Williams is someone that probably will get a couple of targets in the passing game as well. Uh, so if we wanted to bet his over, we'd want to do it here because we are betting on him getting some work in the passing game as well. So from there, are we getting any good prop bets in this other game? I'm not really seeing many here. If anything, again, we'd probably do Ian Wheeler for over his rush receiving yards just because that is an edge that we were getting there because he probably will get a uh, catch or two, at least a target in the passing game. I don't know if I exactly need to go there, um, but it's not bad. So I'll highlight that. I'll give you guys a bet of the day for both prize picks and underdog. And just to remind you guys, if you guys are wanting to use this underdog bet and you guys have never signed up for underdog before, use the promo code 9to5. That's just an easy way to help the channel out. It does not go unnoticed when people use that. And it's just an easy way to help out yourself as well. You get 100% match on deposit up to $100 as well. Let's go ahead and get into that bet. And so again, just on underdog, I do think we have four good prop bets for the preseason games here. I think that's where we're getting the biggest edge for the NFL preseason right now, uh, because all these are the exact same bets that we can make on prize picks, but we would not begin the rush yards. And I think the rush or the receiving yards are key. Again, Collins will probably get a pass or two. Uh, Williams will probably get a catch or two, I should say. Evan Hall, going to get a target. And then Ian Wheeler, he's probably the least likely to get as much work in the passing game. Again, I think that's probably going to be more Travis Homer. At the same time, we should all be looking at about 33% of the snaps or more with all these players, which might not seem like much, but that should be around seven opportunities or more for all of them. And that's, that's pretty good. I'm not saying we have to make these bets on tonight's slate, but if you guys were looking to, I would say these are the four best prop bets that we currently have. And then getting into the prize picks bet slip for today, do want to call it that we are coming in off of a really bad Taco Tuesday day with the slips. It went like two for six. It was terrible. And I want to call that out because, well, typically speaking, we see the exact opposite happen eventually. It just course corrects, right? We're making bets off the expected value that we have against prize picks. And we already are seeing we're getting you know, pretty good edges with really the top four prop bets here. Uh, and I went with Jones in there as well. I think that's going to be a good prop bet for us. Uh, and I kind of expect that to get bumped. So again, if that gets bumped, sorry. Uh, this is one where, again, we're getting decent edge compared to underdog. And then these are just the three top prop bets that we currently have. And then for what it's worth, I know this is a preseason NFL uh, props video. So I want to give you guys a specific slip for that. And I just tossed in the college football one to keep up with that theme. You guys could use any of the other MLB prop bets there as well. But that's kind of what we're looking at today. Again, Jackson should get a decent amount of work. This is a better bet on pick six, though. Okay, that's kind of the nature of the beast here is that uh, a lot of slates now are just making the best bets per platform that we can to have the most profit. All right, guys, that's going to be all for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, good luck. Make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel. Almost at 20K. Appreciate that, guys. Uh, also, if you want access to the tools that you saw in this video, head on over to 95 sports.com to get access to that $10 a month. Thanks for watching. And as always, let's keep cashing.